in the deeply religious West Bank settlement of Itamar. Over the weekend, terrorists broke into the home of an Israeli family, Ruth and Udi Fogel. This happened on Friday. It was a night of bloodshed that Charles Manson couldn't have imagined. It has left the Fogel family, uh, friends, and all of Israel in shock and devastated. But it seems to me, and maybe it's just because of the horrible tragedies that are happening in Japan, that people aren't seeing it, but it is worth stopping for a moment and recognizing that the mother and father of six were butchered to death, along with three of their six children. Two boys aged 11 and three, and a three-month infant girl. Um, I have the photos of the murder scene. I can't show them to you on television. But I have two small children. What kind of monster can butcher an infant, a small child? According to the reports, the terrorists broke through the Fogel's window. They didn't notice a six-year-old boy who was asleep on the couch went right to the bedroom where they slashed the throats of Dad and his newborn baby girl. Ruth, his wife, was stabbed at the entrance of their bathroom. Evidence looks like she tried to fight the terrorist. She lost. The killers then went on to slash the throat of the 11-year-old son who was reading in bed. Thank God they didn't notice the two-year-old asleep in his bed. But they went on to butcher the three-year-old. Two stabs right in the heart. After that, the killers locked the door and exited through a window and escaped. Well, the, here comes the 12-year-old, the daughter. She returned home that night. She found the door locked and asked her neighbor to help her get in. The neighbor woke up the six-year-old sleeping on the couch by calling through a window. The neighbor then went home. Only when the young girl entered the bedrooms and saw these, except not in picture form, she realized her family had been brutally butchered. She ran from the house screaming. There is great and powerful evil in darkness. But if you think this is evil, Wait until I tell you how the story ends. Next. In the 1960s, I was too young to remember um, Charlie Manson, but uh, Bernadine Dorn talked about, yeah, and they stabbed the pregnant one in the belly. That's Bill Ayer's wife. Powerful evil. Um, I just told you the story of what happened in um, in Israel uh, this weekend and uh, the killing of this family. Pictures that I can't show you on television. It is horrific what they did. But if you think that's bad, now let me show you the pictures that I can show you on television. The reaction of the Gaza residents. I find this even more disturbing. After terrorists slaughtered a family, innocent babies. They passed out candies. One resident said the joy was natural, quote, a natural response to the harm settlers inflict on the Palestinian residents in the West Bank. The same people that danced in the streets to celebrate the deaths of 3,000 Americans on 9-11. We are living in times that I believe God will judge each of us for what we do and do not do. And if it's not God, it will at least be historians. I will go back to say what I said at the beginning of the year. There is great and powerful evil, but there is great and powerful light as well. Get into the light and stand in it because evil is growing rapidly.
Last night I showed you the real face of evil, the story of the brutal massacre of the Fogel family living in the West Bank settlement, a little town of Itamar. The story really bothered me, um, especially now because we are seeing such goodness coming out of Japan and so much evil out of the Middle East. But I have an amazing update on this Israeli story. In the face of such horrific evil, I think we found another Amish story. In a radio interview, the mourning father who lost his daughter and three grandkids taught us a lesson of faith while strengthening the people of Israel. According to reports, his inspiring remarks on the Voice of Israel government radio stunned the interviewer into near silence and brought tears to her eyes. He began to express deep pain, but no anger or calls for vengeance. And the interviewer said, where do you find the strength to do this, to strengthen us and not call for vengeance without any anger? Well, the father answered, I have worked in education many years. As an educator, I try to strengthen and teach the people of faith. I understand that I cannot be satisfied with words, that I must also implement the same principles on which I have educated others. This is a test of my faith. Can we and will we pass the test of our faith? Take one thing from this show and remember it tonight. The answer to that is yes.